Hey everyone, I'm Tammy Sollenberger, the author of The One Inside, 30 Days to Your Authentic Self. This podcast is for anyone curious about who they are, the different parts of themselves, and for those who want to connect with their true self. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Hey everyone. On today's episode, I chat with All Together Us author, Valerie Simon. Valerie is a certified IFS therapist, a trainer, educator, and practitioner of psychodrama, and a certified experiential therapist. She is the founder and director of The Inner Stage, a group private practice in New York City where she works with adults recovering from trauma, and she specializes in working with performers and other public figures. Valerie also runs groups and intensives and supervises and trains other practitioners in her hybrid method of IFS and psychodrama called Play Your Parts. On this episode, we discuss what is psychodrama, what are externalizations, psychodrama in a group setting, and parallels and differences between IFS and psychodrama. We talk a whole lot throughout about the similarities because there are many. We also talk about the healing power of integrating both modalities. We have a really fun conversation around how to do unburdening, the redo, and connecting to self using externalizations. That part was amazing, and I think that you'll find that really interesting. And we also talk about player parts in the inner stage. What I loved about this episode is I think it will help give you some ideas around unblending and getting to know your parts in a different way, not just with going inside, getting to know a part, but really externalizing parts and using psychodrama just to help you have a different relationship to your parts. And then, like I said, with the unburdening, Valerie gives a really interesting idea of externalizing self and then having a relationship between self and part. Imagine embodying a part and then having self be the externalization. Really interesting stuff. I think you'll like it. Reminder to pre-order the All Together Us book, which you can do on Amazon. All of the information about how to do that is in the show notes. Enjoy. Valerie, I'm so excited that you're on today. You're actually the first like non, um, so there was Dick, you know, Dick and Jenna, we did a podcast together and then Jenna and I did a podcast together about the book. So you're the first, just like regular author, which I'm putting in wow. quotes. Yeah. So I'm super <laughs> excited for this. Cause I'm like, I've got to get going. And you know, my managers are all being super lazy these days. So, um, I'm really excited to talk about your chapter and to get to know you and, um, what you're passionate about. So let's just start with where we always start, which is where you are in the world and what you would see if you look out your nearest window. Sounds good. And first of all, thank you so much for having me, Tammy. I'm really excited to be here. And if I turn around, I can look out the window right now. I see New York City. I see a big beige high-rise building and another white high-rise building. I see a little bit of my terrace. If I look to my right, all the way down the, the avenue, I can see some flags from the UN. And if I look to my left, I can see every once in a while, a tram, a red tram kind of going across the avenue there. So, and you have a terrace. And that sounds nice to have a terrace in New York City. Very grateful. Yeah, moved here sometime last year. It's the first time I've ever had oh. any outside space. So it's it's quite exciting. <laughs> good, good. I love that. Um, and how cold is it there today? We're recording it's, this in February. So how's it? Yeah, that's a good question. I haven't gone outside yet because I've been working from home. Let me see. It is a balmy 47 degrees right now. It's not bad. That no. actually sounds very lovely. Yeah. And it's sunny today. So it's it's been a little uh, milder lately, which we always appreciate here in New York in the winter. Yes. Yes. I agree. I appreciate that too. Um, yeah, it's sunny and 40, 45 degrees. And I took my dog for a walk today and it was just lovely, lovely. So uh, that's nice. Yeah. Um, so you um, wrote the chapter on psychodrama. So why don't we start with maybe just telling everybody a little bit about your 
I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't say I was going to ask you this, but how about you just give everybody a little <laughs> bit of like how you came to fall in love with psychodrama? How oh, about we start great. there? Is that okay? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So how did I fall in love with psychodrama? Well, just a little rewind before I found psychodrama, I had gone to film school undergraduate. So I'd worked in the film industry, not as a performer, but more behind the behind the scenes stuff. And I was at some point looking to find, like, I knew I wanted to go to graduate school. I knew I wanted to be doing something that was more connecting with people, helping people more directly. Um, and it was quite honestly, a personal therapy session. Uh, I'm, I'm getting personal here. Um, we like that. And, we like that. Oh, good. Personal, okay, yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> And I was in, it was actually, it was a, it was a couple's therapy session with somebody I haven't been in a relationship with for a very long time, but I'm very grateful that relationship brought me to psychodrama because we were in a session and the therapist who then became my primary trainer, her name is Tian Dayton. She did this thing where she got up, stood behind me and with my permission put her hand on my shoulder and said something in the first person for me, kind of what she suspected maybe I was feeling, but I wasn't getting to if I was kind of more up in my head. And she said something that just connected with me. And I remember just crying like mm -hmm. tears, which wasn't so easy for me to get to at the time. So it just resonated. And that's, that's a technique called doubling. I didn't know it then, but that's called doubling, which um, can be really powerful in a, in a therapy session. So that's how I got here. And I was like, what is that? You're like, I want to know what that is. Yeah. So I want to pause on your story. So yeah. I want to pause sort of where you are. And so in IFS, would we say that was kind of like self, like saying to a part, like I understand kind of, kind of like a witnessing, like, like when self maybe says to a part, like, oh, what I'm really hearing you say is this. And then the part feels really heard and understood. Absolutely. Yeah. From now my IFS lens, I would say that, that the therapist was sort of holding self energy for me in such a clear way that, that yeah. yes, this part felt really witnessed and was yeah. able to release. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you were in the couple session. She does this magical thing. You had this release and this emotion that was hard to access at the time. And so then, and you had been going to film school or you've been to film school. And so what happened after that? Yeah. And at this point, I'm a therapist. I'd gone okay, to you are a therapist. Grad, grad okay. school. Yes. Okay. And, and I had been trying to figure out what postgraduate training do I want to do? And I had been working with children at the time and thought I was going to go in that route. And then I found psychodrama and found out that this therapist trained people in psychodrama. So we stopped working with her as a couples therapist, not to have like a dual relationship as we call it in this business. And I just started doing this training and it was really magical for me. It just, it, you know, now from an IFS pers perspective, I understand more about self-energy. I didn't, I didn't know that term back then, but I realized that kind of the healing work there, there are so many nuances that, that overlap with IFS that now I'm just so excited knowing both modalities, but back yeah. then it was just really healing. Love yeah. it. Um, and I know I've said this before on other episodes, but I love when, you know, the thing that we love, like we love IFS and it feels so true and real to us. And then it matches or goes along with the other things that feel real and true, right? It's not like, you know, my, my, my work is IFS and I do that. And then, you know, my faith is this. And then you know, I like the Enneagram and, you know, so it's, so, but all of those, yeah. my faith and my work and the, how I see the world and how I see us and, and how I see people and how I see myself, all of that, all three things that are super important to me all work together. Like they yeah. work together. Um, so, so tell me and tell us what is psychodrama and how is it different than let's say talk therapy, uh, maybe not IFS, but just sort of talk therapy. And then we right. can talk about how it's similar to IFS. Sounds good. Yeah. Psychodrama is an experiential form of therapy. So, right. We're not just talking about something that happened to us. We would use role-playing to enact it. It was originally created to, to use with groups. And certainly we do that, 
Um, but you can also use it one-to-one -one with people using props and an empty chair. People have heard of like the empty chair method. Actually, the creator of psychodrama, J.L. Moreno, is the person who created that. And the person who people kind of associate it with gestalt therapy. Um, and the person who created gestalt therapy had trained with J.L. Moreno. This is back in the 1950s. So you can see there's there's overlap in a lot of places. But psychodrama, as far as I know is really like the first experiential therapy modality. So you use role-playing, um, JL Moreno, the creator, um, really wanted to help people increase their spontaneity and creativity and, and to help heal any old wounds and using this the psychodramatic stage to help enact different scenes from your life. It could be, could also be something more internal that we externalize. So that kind of connects with IFS. Yeah. 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 So if you were in, if you were in one-on-one -on -one therapy um, and talking about, um, let's just pick something kind of neutral, like a fight with a friend or you can't get along with, you know, having a hard time getting along with your partner. Um, not, nope. that, not that it's neutral, but something that's not, <laughs> you know, trauma. What would happen in a psychodrama session? Let's say if I, let's say if I go in and I talk about feeling you know, stressed about my relationship. Yeah. So this, I'm going to talk about more classical psychodrama before I knew IFS. So Perfect. I might say to you, do you want to imagine that your partner is sitting here in this room? You can pretend they're sitting in this chair. If, if that resonates for you, you can say anything you want to say to him, her, or them. And there, I can help you with some techniques, the doubling that I mentioned, I might, with your permission, come behind you if it's okay to put my hand on your shoulder. And we always ask permission. Um, I might say something that I suspect you're feeling, but maybe isn't quite what's coming out for you at the moment. And I do that. And I also make sure that, you know, I might get it wrong, right? You know what you're feeling better than I do. So you can always correct any doubling that I do and make it your own. And if I get it, it feels accurate. You can repeat it in your own words. So that's one thing. The other thing, which you can do with a psychodrama session at some point after you've said what you need to say to your partner, I might say reverse roles. And when that happens, you literally stand up, move, sit down in the other chair, take on the role of your partner and answer as that person. So, and I might do some doubling when you're in role reversal. Now we call the client, quote unquote, a protagonist when we're doing classical psychodrama. So I could also double for you when you're the protagonist in role reversal. So those are like two, two of the real fundamental techniques. And, you know, talking about something versus having the action experience in the moment, just can shift things really a lot more quickly and kind of get us out of our heads too. Yeah. I love that. I mean, I want people to think about, even as they're listening right now, if they can imagine a problematic, you know, a person that they have, that there is just sort of a problematic relationship or which I mean, we all have in some way. Um, and then imagine what it feels like if you go into a therapy session and you're talking about it right and he said this and then she said this and i said this and blah, 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 right. Blah, 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 right and sort of that you know so there is a little bit of like catharsis that could happen from doing that but how different that would feel if i imagine my partner in the chair and then i could say all the things that i want to say i could cry i could yell i could scream i could hit what i mean i not hit yeah. but whatever you know sort of release yeah. that sort of be in my let my body really feel that like that, that, and then the reversal, like, oh, the part of me is like, oh, I don't, that would be really hard. <laughs> it is sometimes, right. And you only, uh, you know, I wouldn't do that with everybody. And I likely wouldn't do it the first time someone tries this exercise. You know, you kind of have to, yeah, have gotten, gotten some of it out first. And it, yeah. you know, and that's yeah. plenty. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I think that just even ima imagining doing that feels yeah. so different, like how different a therapy session would go. Um, yeah. 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 It really can just break through things. And, you know, as, as we've all learned, all of us therapists, and really, I think even the general public knows this now, 
just how uh, trauma gets stored in our bodies. So engaging the body in therapy can be really helpful. Right. And I wonder how much, you know, just sitting, you know, especially if we were in, you know, in person or even, you know, online now that we do so much of that, they just sort of, I'm sitting still in the chair because I have to be polite. I'm just going to sit here (laughs) politely because manners are important. I'm going to be just politely telling you about this thing that really pisses me off. (laughs) Right. I'm going to do it in a really (laughs) nice way. (laughs) Right. Right. It kind of, it cuts through a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Well, and then I imagine doing it in a group, like, let's talk about that. Like, so tell me yeah. about doing psychodrama in a group and what's different about that. And maybe some of your experiences of what you've seen um, in a group. Yeah. So some psychodrama has three parts to it, warm up, action and sharing. And so you warm up the group. Sometimes you're asking certain kinds of questions. People answer in action. I could say, imagine there's an imaginary line running down across the floor here. Um, and if I wanted to find out how nervous people are, say it's the first group and it's a new group. So I'd say, imagine there's this line on the floor here. On this end of the spectrum is I'm not nervous at all. On this end of the spectrum is I'm really terrified to be here. And you can go stand and place yourself anywhere on that continuum and then people share with each other. So it it really just having a little physical movement and getting to connect with the person standing next to you who what we would call your double because they might be sort of similarly at the similar anxiety level in this instance. So it really just helps warm up a group. So we do some warm up, and then often it would lead to somebody either being chosen by the group to be the protagonist, it could be as the therapist, which we call director when we're running a psychodrama group, um, I might have an instinct that someone's really warmed up or somebody might select themselves and say, I really want to work today. There's something I really want to, you know, do, do something with. So there are different ways to, to warm up to being a protagonist. And then that person, once we've gone through that whole process, we would kind of walk and talk and find out a little bit about what they want to work on, kind of make a contract about what we're going to do, and then start enrolling people and choose somebody to play your mother, choose somebody to play your partner, choose somebody. We can also do something that's more in a, a part. We, we didn't know like we were doing parts work with psychodrama, but um, choose somebody to play your anxiety, choose somebody to play your anger. You know, you can con- what we call concretize uh, different parts of yourself, and then that, yeah. and then you yeah yeah. So and, and then we just start um, going through a scene, you know. And I'm as the facilitator, you know. Maybe you can also people who are not in playing a role in the group. We can offer them sometimes to kind of do a pop up double where they just jump in if they kind of sense something, and then I, I do role reversal and have literally say, if it's somebody playing your partner, they'd become you and you'd become them and both play the roles. So you can see like a lot can really happen in a, in one scene. Mm. And yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm guessing a lot can happen. It sounds really, really powerful, really intense. There's something, again, this is IFSC, but like something about being witnessed, like to have, to be yes. vulnerable and then having that be witnessed by this group of people um, that feels so healing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then just to make sure you, you know about this part, the third part of a psychodrama after the work is done. And sometimes there's a catharsis where somebody, sometimes emotion comes out, but it's not like it has to, there's nothing mandatory about it by any means. And, and as a director, we have to watch our parts not to want to push something. And that's where, when we get to talking about how to combine IFS and psychodrama, we'll get to that. But then the third part is sharing where everyone de-rolls who played a role, um, which is just kind of saying like, I'm not, I'm not your partner. I'm Valerie. You know, you just de-roll. You might share something about what it was like to play the role for somebody. And then everyone who who witnessed and what we call the audience also gets to share about just what their experience was like witnessing it. It's not about giving advice. Like there, there are some real guidelines. Like we don't say, well, why'd you do this? Or why don't you just say this to your parent or, you know, whatever it is, we don't let that happen. It's really just 
first person sharing, like I really related because this happened in my life or this really reminded me of this time, you know, those kinds of shares. And the protagonist is like a sponge, doesn't, doesn't talk, just listens and receives all the sharing. Mm -hmm. So that's the third part. I love that. Um, so tell me about, why don't we talk about externalization externalizations because that's what we are talking about so right. maybe yeah so let's talk about what are externalizations maybe we can use this as talk to start talking about the integration of ifs and psychodrama yeah great well first of all i'm so grateful that uh richard schwartz dick schwartz um was willing to include externalizations in this model so there's room for any other kinds of creative arts therapists, psychodramatists, et cetera, art therapy to, to, you know, that, that he recognized that for some folks sort of doing something outside of oneself, as opposed to closing one's eyes and going inside can, it can be useful or in the beginning of the work with somebody, and then they can shift to more insight oriented IFS work. So externalizations, you know, I, I I wish I could say, oh, I have this perfect idea of if a person is this way or that way, then definitely do this. But, you know, I, I don't think, it, right, we don't fit into little boxes. So um, I have found just sometimes every now and then there will be somebody who I've worked with where if I'm trying insight oriented, you know, I more classical IFS, the closing one's eyes is just challenging for whatever reason. And there are good reasons, protectors, right? Yeah. I don't know their system yet, et cetera. So it might be just to start with a part and like a part that isn't maybe, you know, like a firefighter that that is really harming someone's life that you're so polarized with or that you're really just having so many challenges with. It might be one of your managers that really, you know, like I have a manager that like keeps me pretty well organized and sometimes it can drive me a little crazy I love it but you know but it's not something that like really causes me a lot of turmoil and distress so I might start with something like that and then you know for somebody that may be closing their eyes doesn't feel comfortable would you like to talk to a pretend it's sitting in this chair or look around the room is there any object in the room that could represent this part for you and then doing some of those psychodramatic techniques, we can start there. And then I've I've really seen things shift where once, you know, it can help with unblending externalizations, right? And unblending, right? When we're, feels like a part is all of us. Um, I've just noticed when you see the part, right? You're talking to it in an externalization, you know, we might not be, very clearly connected with self energy yet, but there's still some separation starting. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 There's space. I mean, there's literal, yeah. <laughs> there's exactly. literal space, right? Like, so, you know, so that manager that keeps you really organized and, and keeps you on top of stuff. And if you're imagining that that is actually sitting in the chair or is, you know, the vase of roses that is, that is in your apartment right now, you know, that that's, that's the manager. And so then you have a space between you and that, that thing. And then what the word that's coming up to, to me is the word relating, like then I can have a relationship yes. with it. Just like when we talked about just, um, classic psychodrama, I, I then now have a, a different type of relationship with my partner that's sitting in the chair or, you know, all of these, you know, people in my life that I'm having a hard time with, I'm relating to, I begin to relate to them differently with yeah. the externalization. So that's what I'm, I'm hearing just this word, like relating. So then I self then has, um, I'm relating to them differently. So you can yeah. say, okay, so this is, so let's say the vase of flowers is your manager. And so what will happen then? Okay. So the vase of flowers is my manager, um, who keeps me really organized, but also drives me crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, we can do a little pretend, uh, if if I were the protagonist, I were the client, I would just start talking to it. So I wouldn't say vase of roses. I would say, you know, organ <laughs> my organizer. I just want to say to you that, you know, I really appreciate how you help me with my career. You keep me on top of things. You keep me organized. You keep me, you know, moving forward. But sometimes like on the weekends when you keep me like cleaning the house and, you know, not going outside when it's a beautiful day because I have things to do 
I just really wish that you could like give me a break sometimes, for example. Yeah. You know, good. Yeah. For pretend. I mean, right. Yeah. For a friend. Exactly. <laughs> totally for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And so then what happens then? Like, do you have, do you have then like, so can you, can you then, okay. Do you then say, okay, so the part, well, you might not say it this way, but like the part that says, you know, can you just give me a friggin' break? Not that that's what you said, but sort of, can you give yeah. me a break? Uh, this is Saturday. Yeah. I want to go outside. Give me a break. Can, do you say, okay, let's pick an object for that part. Absolutely. You can do that. I mean, like now that I'm parts informed, I'm seeing different parts, right? Like now that I understand qualities of self energy, I'm seeing, oh, okay, this person is talking from another part, like a polarized part. So I might then say, choose an object to represent the part that really doesn't like this organizer, something like that. So then they could look around the room, have another object there and talk to that. And also reverse roles, you know, so yeah. then, and that, you know, where you kind of, I can tie in what we do both in psychodrama and IFS, which is the interview, which is talking, I can ask questions to a part or if, you know, the protagonist can as well. But if if the protagonist is in role reversal, I might say, so tell me like organizer, how'd you get this job? You know, so then you're really right. Getting to know the part, befriending it etc the things that we do with IFS tell me about what you see as parallels and differences between IFS and psychodrama yeah yeah and that and that's a big question so I'll 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 probably be able to do a chunk of it at at once but um so so, there are so many parallels you know uh, in terms of working with parts now in the psychodrama world we didn't necessarily use the word parts and I think what what Dick Schwartz has created with IFS just really, um, for me at least, kind of like solidified something that I was doing, but I didn't have the as like clear a framework. What I love about IFS is there's like a structure to it, right? There are steps in a structure. And sometimes, and I love psychodrama as well, but it can feel a little like the wild, wild west you know, where you can just kind of like go for it as a director and bring somebody really quickly. Now what I would call to an exile. We do a lot of inner child work with psychodrama. And so since I've learned IFS, I really kind of have a different framework in terms of I wouldn't, first of all, I wouldn't push toward that. I would let the protagonist, if we get there, we get there. If we stay working with one part or five parts, That's great, you know. Um, Back then, right? I didn't know that that there are some there are reasons that you don't want to push past protectors. Um, But you know, I it's I think IFS just um, because the concept of self energy is so um, vital and such the really like we don't get to an exile until we know there's self energy present. So that's a real difference. I feel like I went into differences more than similarities. <laughs> no, because I think, you know, that you, I think by talking about, you're talking about them both at the same time. I think it's hard to just okay. like to talk about one than the other. So I think that was, I think that was great. Um, and I think I'm hearing even the similarities and differences, even as you describe psychodrama, bringing the self, like bringing the self sounds sort yeah. of funny, but, but sort of that, that seems like a pretty big, significant difference because then yes. we're like, okay, so I know now that it's just not like, um, you know, parts relating to parts, but it's really, we, we, this language isn't right. I know it's not right, but getting, I get self then to relate to these different parts of me, whether it's, you know, the people in the group or the yep. objects in the room, um, then, then I'm, that I and self am in relating to them. And so that feels like a significant difference between, between the two. So sort of using the yes. psychodrama techniques and then combining that with like, the knowledge of self. Exactly. I think you just like really hit the nail on the head where um, (laughs) when, when, you know, when I'm directing a psychodrama 
first of all, I have to be clear that I am connected with my self energy, right? Because if I have a part like a manager that's like, I really want this to get from here to here for this client, this protagonist, I'm not going to be, you know, of service. So it's really checking in with my own self energy. If I'm running a group, if people are playing roles, you know, I, I now do like check-ins around self-energy, like check-in, are there any parts that don't want you to accept playing this role for the protagonist right now? And sometimes naming it is enough and then the part steps back. But if it's not stepping back, then we would go in a different direction. And that's not something I would have been doing before I knew IFS. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's that question that I think sometimes we forget about asking, but it seems to be such an important question are, is, you know, are there parts that are concerned or hesitant to get to know this part that, you know, we want to get to know. And then if there is, then sometimes that becomes our target part, even though they're parts of us, even as a therapist or even as a client, like, no, I want to get to the, get to know the part of me that is mad about this. And it's like, but there's a part that's scared to get to know that part. And then we do have to work with a part that's scared, even if, even as a client or a therapist, we think that's not where the work is. The work is to get to know the the mad, but we really need to get to go, the, get to know the scared first. Exactly. Exactly. So that's a great example of how um, my work has shifted since I've done my deep dive into IFS training for the last several years. Yeah. Like I, you know, And also sometimes just less is more when we're working with parts, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. There's so much about us. So if we sort of, you know, and one thing I I love about IFS is we can talk about us as therapists and us as clients (laughs) in the same sentence, you know, but sort of like if I'm, if I'm, you know, the therapist then, um, or the director, then I do have to work with my parts that are like, no, I want to get to the anger because that's going to get us to the exile. And so I do need to work on that part. So like, yeah, if we hang out with the part that's scared and that's all we, like, you know, all we do, which I'm putting in air quotes, then that's beautiful because then they feel self energy and they get to know that part. And and then with, then it sounds like too, then they, um, you know, you give them this experience of this externalization that now they have that experience. So then now there's trust in the system. So now the next time you meet, they're like, okay, now we know how to do this. And my system knows, okay, now, now we know how to do this. And so we can do it with some things that feel maybe a little bit scarier. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And, and all the other thing that's kind of cool is, is for me, when I'm directing, it's like knowing that somebody, even parts that aren't you know, involved in a particular psychodrama scene or, or they're watching, like they're paying attention, yeah. you know? Yeah. So just like, right. they're going to have an experience too. Yeah. Yeah. And I, so I, I want people to hear that. Cause I think that's something that sounds a little bit weird. You know, there's a lot of stuff <laughs> about IFS that sounds a little bit weird, but there is truth to that, that, right. Like, even if I am self and I'm just getting to know this part that's scared, all my, well, all, can we say all, I don't know, but a lot of my parts are watching and listening and learning from that and building yeah. trust with me just by seeing how I treat this part. Like, yeah. so, and I, yeah, which I think when we think about parts as actual sort of like beings or people or something like mm-hmm. that, I think that makes more sense, right? Like if I'm in a room and I'm, and I'm interacting with sadness, there's a whole bunch of other people in this room watching. So I yes. know that sounds a little bit weird. Notice the parts of you that are they're skeptical <laughs> parts that are coming up. Like, what is this craziness? But those parts are welcome. Right, right. That reminds me, Tammy, when I first um, heard about IFS before I had ever seen Dick Schwartz do a demo of it, which then totally blew my mind. But I just remember hearing firefighters, managers, and like, what is this? Like, this sounds so cutesy and... And, you know, clearly I had a critical uh, manager there, not that I knew that then, but yeah, it really, it's like, this is just weird. Not that psychodrama doesn't have some weirdness to it, right? Right. But yeah, it took me a while to really, or took my parts, I should say, a while to be open and to really learning it. You know, well, and I think that's one of the similarities between the two that I'm hearing is it is experiential. So it's like, we can talk about it. I can talk about it. You can talk about it. People can listen to podcasts about it and read books about it. That is very different than actually doing it. So just like a psychodrama session or experience doing it and participating in it is going to give, it's going to, it's a completely different experience. I don't, I don't know what other word to use just like, you know, doing IFS is a very different experience than just listening or 
reading a book about it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So uh, clearly you have a passion for both, both of these modalities. Um, and yes. so you have a passion for integrating them. So let's talk about that. And I also want to talk about if we have time, what is the inner stage? Mm-hmm. And I want to talk about what play your parts is. So it's three different things, but they probably <laughs> are all the same thing. Okay. So what, what was your first question? Just so I um, start in the right place. The int- your passion for integrating okay. both of the modalities. Yeah. So so I had been doing psychodrama for quite some time. It's a really long certification process for good reasons. Um, and then I went to the psychotherapy networker conference in Washington, DC. This was, I don't know, maybe eight years ago, something like that. And Dick Schwartz shared a demo video. He talked about IFS and then shared a demonstration video. And I was just blown away. So um, I went, I've gone on this deep dive about, okay, how do I learn IFS? And then once I really got knowledgeable about that, and I'm still always learning in both modalities, but um, how do I integrate these two uh, modalities? And yeah, I mean, one of the things that I think I touched on a little bit, just making sure that there's self-energy present for both in myself, most importantly with the protagonist, the client, if I'm running a group with all the group members. So integrating might mean that we start with more of an IFS meditation, just checking in or any parts here, any parts don't want to be here, any parts that, you know, have hesitation so we can all speak for them, see if they're willing to just give a little space and watch. Um, So just, you know, to bring as much self energy to the room when I'm doing psychodrama techniques. And then also if I'm doing, like if I'm starting with more classical IFS, trying an externalization, like if something isn't kind of um, happening with more classical and, and also direct access, something where we're talking to a part either specific explicitly or implicitly, it's a little more like psychodrama then, it's sort of externalizing talking to the part. Also in IFS, in an unburdening process, some some people or exiles, I should say, really want a redo. So externalizing a redo, kind of having that corrective scene where, you know, if if an exile, a young inner child experienced, um, say, some form of abuse, getting to have a redo scene where self-energy is present, the adult self is mm-hmm. present. And let's say a person gets arrested or taken away from the home, or, you know, there's a consequence can be so healing to, to really see this enacted. This is in a group, of course. Yeah. You know, so really integrating both yeah. methods yeah. together. Yeah. I feel like that. I love that you just made that point because that feels so powerful. I mean, that's one thing about doing a redo when self does the redo or even our, you know, higher power spirit guides, whatever helps us do a redo with our parts, um, to have other people really participate in a redo. I just, I just think that would be so powerful. Yeah, absolutely. And Mm -hmm. one, one thing that I've been doing, which isn't sort of, I don't know if if folks from IFS, if Richard Schwartz would freak out hearing me that I do this because it's it's really stepping outside of of the bounds of of classical IFS but I've had if somebody's you know kind of struggling to connect with self energy I might have either person play that role and clearly they have to be tapped into their own self energy to do it or if it's an individual session an object to kind of hold the space for self energy and you can talk to it like, you know, I feel like I can't get close to you. I feel like, you know, you're nowhere. Like every time I, it, like you just leave me, you know, whatever it is. And you can really sort of, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're embodying, <laughs> I love that idea so much. I mean, cause you're embodying a part, right? So I'm going to embody exactly. the part. I'm going to give the exactly. part the microphone and then that part can talk to me, but it's talking to me as this, this object. And I love that. That is, that's brilliant brilliant yeah I love it and and then down the road if if there's some connection starting with self-energy I might say reverse roles 
like oh, talk to you, yeah. talk yeah. to this part of you from your self energy. So, mm, you know, yeah. it's a little different than IFS, but <laughs> I bet you Dick would love it. Not that I could speak on his behalf, but I love I love that idea. But imagine if we have this object for some reason I'm I'm picturing like this glass, you know, this glass something. And the, imagine yeah. that if you held it like kind of it's far, you know, self is far, put it far across the room, and then you kind of purposely bring it really, really close to your heart or your mind. Or I don't know. I just think that sounds so lovely. Exactly. Yeah, that's beautiful. That is really it. beautiful. Mm. Um, I know we're going to run out of time here pretty soon. Um, so don't rush this, this okay. at all, but I want to hear about the inner stage and I want to hear about play your parts. Sounds good. The inner stage is my private practice in New York city. And I also, of course, in this day and age work virtually, uh, work remotely with folks and it's a group practice. You know, I myself work with, with people and I, I, sort of have developed a bit of a specialty working with performers and, you know, high profile individuals in that realm. Um, just as there are some things that are so unique about that world that, you know, that people have to navigate and parts and, you know, ex and also a lot of parts coming at you <laughs> from, from folks. Yeah. Um, so that's what I do, but I also supervise and train other clinicians. So it's a group practice. I have other folks and everyone has to have some IFS training to, to be a part of the practice. And I've had a private practice, gosh, about 20 years now, time flies. <laughs> and yeah. And, you know, I have space in, in Midtown West, kind of near Carnegie Hall in Manhattan. Wonderful. Um, do yeah. you do any online groups? Or so for people that live in all over the world, you know, all over the world that listen to this podcast, um, do you do any groups or anything like that, that people could be a part of or? Yeah. Well, funny you mentioned that, Tammy, that's what, <laughs> that's what play your parts really is about that. I am, you know, having just written this book chapter about it, the integration of psychodrama and IFS, I want to bring the things that I've learned to, to folks so I am just now, I have just created both some virtual workshops and groups and training for other clinicians who are interested in integrating psychodrama and IFS. Great. And so how can yeah. people find out about that? Yeah. Well, you can certainly, folks can look on my website, which is theinnerstage.com. I'm also on social media um, at the inner stage. Uh, on Instagram, Twitter, and I have a Facebook page as well. Um, well, I'm excited about play your parts because I, first of all, I love that phrase, perfect phrase. And um, I'm excited for that because I just think that'd be really fun. And yeah. yeah. So anything else you want to say before I ask my last question? Um, well, you know, I'm just really excited. I'm realizing like how excited I am about all of this as I'm talking with you. So I want to thank you, you know having me here you're welcome okay. I think this really was grateful. I think yeah you're welcome you're welcome if you so my last question is yeah. if you were not doing what you're doing and you could do anything you wanted to but in, but you had to do something different what would you do now is this question like do I have to have the actual talent and skills to do this no or is this a, okay good a hundred percent no okay yeah. <laughs> okay so <laughs> if that's the case then I would I I really think I would want to be a singer and a songwriter yeah because just like being able to connect with people on that emotional level you mm -hmm. know is something I love I I feel like I get to do it I'm very grateful to, to have some of that connection through through the work I do as a therapist um but yeah that that would be I think my my dream job if I had those skills <laughs> yeah I love it. I love it. I, th I think that is, yeah, that is powerful. Like, like when yeah. you, just like you said, when the, when that therapist originally, you know, said the thing that you had a hard time saying, I think that's what some, sometimes songs you're like, that's what I mean. That's what I think. That's what I feel. Um, so yeah, I get that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for this, Valerie. Um, it's been really fun talking to you. I'm really excited about your chapter and I'm excited about play your parts and I look forward to hearing more about that um, in the future. And thank you so much, Tammy. And I can't wait to read your chapter in All Together Us. Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you like this episode, please subscribe, rate, like, all the things. My book is available at your favorite independent bookstore or all the places books are available. 
You can also visit my website, TammySallenberger.com, where you can download a free meditation on getting to know your should parts. You know there's parts of you who remind you of what you should be doing. They sound a bit critical at times. Yes, we all have them. You can follow me at IFS Tammy on Instagram and Twitter and the One Inside Facebook page. I'm so grateful for Jack Reardon, who created the new music. Jack is a graduate of Derek Scott's IFS Stepping Stone program. Thanks, Jack, for getting me. And to you, thanks for listening.